Now in an earlier section, I showed you how to customize your mouse right click to open a shortcut menu or to use it as an enter key. I like to have these turned on in a hybrid mode where it uses the enter key and the shortcut key because they give me quick access to often used commands or tools right where I'm working. Now you don't have to hunt for them or you don't have to type in the command line to get them. They're just there. So there are several different shortcut menus and each one depends on your current activity or situation, you know, for which one shows up. So as of right now, I don't have anything going on, meaning that I haven't started a command or selected an object. I'm just sitting here ready to get started. So right now, if I right click and hold, I'll get the default shortcut menu. With this, I can repeat my last command. I can look at recent input. I can get to my clipboard by doing cut, copy, paste. I can isolate my objects, undo, pan, zoom, bring up steering wheels, action recorder, and some other options. Now let's say I have an object and I've selected that object and I right click. This will give me a different shortcut menu. This is called the edit mode shortcut menu. It will give us commands like move, copy, rotate, and some others. So I can erase it, I can move it, I can get to a lot of these different editing commands very quickly and I don't have to change my ribbon tab, I don't have to stop, enter in another command, I can get to all of it right here. Now I can select similar, I can deselect everything so I can change my selection and I can do a lot of different things to it. So your shortcut menus are contextual, meaning different types of shortcut menus will pop up at different times. So if I start a command, like the line command, and now if I right click, I get a set of different commands here. It's even a smaller set. So I can pan or zoom, I can get around, I can undo, I can get to my O snaps. And we'll talk about O snaps later on, but these O snaps or object snaps will help me to draw very specifically on my drawing. So this is a very useful tool that I might want to get to. Typically, right-clicking will give you an appropriate shortcut menu for what you're currently doing. So as you work with AutoCAD and need to do something with your command, or your object, or whatever situation you're in, right-click. It could be a real time saver. Also, it will help you to learn the abilities of the commands that you're using. Now, everything in AutoCAD can be customized, even the right-click function. It used to be that the right-click was nothing more than an enter command. Now, you still have that option, but you can use either the enter or the shortcut version of the right click. I've shown you how to do that in a previous section, but in case you skip that section, I want to show it to you here very quickly. So you want to get to your options. You type in OP, press return, and you go to the user preferences tab. Now there are a lot of different tabs on here, but we want the user preferences tab. Then go to the right click customization and you can turn on the time sensitive right click by clicking on this little box here, putting a check in it. Now, if you want to work with this, all you have to do is right click and hold and you wait a few milliseconds, 250 of them to be exact, and then the shortcut menus will pop up. Otherwise, a quick right click will just apply an enter key or a space bar and they work the same way. Another form of interface in AutoCAD is called the palettes. Many managers and tools are in the form of a palette. Now these palettes have tools, commands, or other information in it that allow you to manipulate your objects or to add to your drawing. One palette that I always use is the Property Manager palette. To open it, press the Control key and the number one at the same time. This is your Properties palette. This palette shows you the properties of any selected object or objects. So if I select this line, it will tell me that I've selected a line some general information, its color, layer, line type, etc., and its geometry. I can scroll up and down here, left click on this scroll bar and just move it up and down. Now if I want to close it, I just come up to this top part here and click on the X or I press Control 1 at the same time. This is a great tool that you can use to alter objects with. I'll get into it in more detail later on. Now Control 2 will bring up the Design Center palette. This palette is a tool where you can get items from other drawings and move them into your drawing. You can browse to a file, select the type of item you need, then select that item. You click and hold that item, whatever it might be, and then you just simply drag it into your file. Control 3 will open up your tool palettes palette. This palette is full of blocks, hatch patterns, materials, and other commands. You can click on these and get to other tools, other commands some blocks and things. I can just click, drag, and drop. 
and now it's put into my drawing. Pretty cool. Another useful palette that's a calculator. If you press Control and 8 at the same time, that will bring it up. Now, palettes are really cool because you can drag them all around on your screen. You can stretch them to make them a little bigger or smaller, whatever the case might be. This calculator is just that. Now, if I have it open and I've clicked on it, it's activated, I can just type in my commands as you would on a regular calculator and get your answers that way. So I can just type in my numbers like I normally would on my keyboard, or I can click on any of them here with your mouse, and then just do your regular math. Now this is really nice because you may need to use some of these numbers inside AutoCAD and to put them into a note or anything like that, because you can now highlight these with the left click and drag, and then right click and copy it out, and then you can just paste it into an email, into some notes, or to anywhere else that you might want to put it in. Again, close this, just click on the X. Now it might not look like it, but the command line is also a palette. It's right here. I can click it, drag it, stretch it out so that it's bigger, and move it all around. I can even close it if I want to. When you want it to come back up, you can just press Control and 9 at the same time, and it'll come back to the same way that you had it last. Typically, all you really need is one line for your command line. Now, Control Zero is not a palette, but it's a drawing mode. It's called the Clean Screen Mode. This mode gets rid of almost everything on your screen, giving you more screen real estate to draw with. So press Control and Zero. And as you can see here, my drawing area is much bigger. So you can see here the Control Zero, it just gets rid of most everything. Now you can continue to work as you normally would. Zoom and pan with your mouse, type in your commands, all that you want to whatever it is you need to do. Now your ribbon and all that stuff are just turned off. To get it all back, just press the control zero again. And that brings everything back to the way it was. There are some other palettes available, but their complexity goes a little bit beyond the scope of this video. So I only wanted to touch on the main ones that you're more likely to use 90% of the time. Palettes can be rearranged in your drawing area though, as I kind of showed you earlier. They can be docked or locked into position, or they can just float around. They can hide themselves or they can stay open. You can right click on them, and I don't know if you're getting a theme yet, but right clicking in AutoCAD is a big deal. You can get to a lot of different things. So you can look at them, you can right click on them. This will change some of your settings, like I said, to a docket or not. You can click on these buttons here to automatically hide it. You can left click here and you can change some of the transparency settings on it if you like. Normally I just leave it, but hiding them so that they automatically hide like this is a great way to save some screen space. So you always have access to it. You can still dock it if you want. Just right click on it and allow for docking and it can show up. You can click and drag and make them smaller. So there are a lot of different manipulations that you have available for you on tool palettes. 